I'm excited about this journey to joy, and we're going to unpack some things because I think sometimes there's a little bit of a misconception, and I've talked about this off and on, but I want to break down the difference between joy and happiness. Our anchor verse, if you're brand new to Hope City, you know your boy loves anchor verses. If you do not, uh, if you, actually, if you're new to Hope City, I love anchor verses. If you're from Hope City, you know that this is something I love to anchor the whole weekend to. Psalm 1611, it's on the screens. It says, you make the path of life known to me. How many of y'all are grateful for a God that gives you direction like a GPS to your life? The catch is we have to listen. That's where it gets messy. <laughs> you make known to me the path of life. Complete joy is in your presence. Come on, say complete joy. I need you to grab that. Complete joy is in your presence. Pleasures are by your side forever. I wanna break something down because we believe here at Hope City and I believe as your pastor that every word of the Bible is God breathed. And I wanna look and focus on one word here in Psalm 1611 and that word is joy. Come on, somebody say joy. If you're churchy, churchy, you probably sang that song when you're looking, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We had nine people participate. <laughs> We're a church of outreach, clearly. You're like, I don't know that goofy song. There was an old song, joy, 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 down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? And it was this whole song that has never left me. It haunts me to this day. Anyways, in week one of Journey to Joy, I want to talk about for a moment how this verse is not saying that complete happiness is found in the presence of God. No, the Bible says that we find complete joy. And it's important because we oftentimes mix these two words up and we think that joy is happiness. Happiness is something that comes from something that happens. Joy, however, is what comes from eternal security with our Savior. Some examples would be of happiness. I'm happy that my car didn't need that repair that they said it, that, that it did. I'm happy that I found that, come on somebody, somebody should shout amen that I found that perfect parking spot. Come on, like, you know you're like, I'm walking in complete favor today. Like, I don't know what all you peasants are doing, clearly not praying, but look at this spot. I'm grateful that we get to spend time with family and friends during the holidays. Some of you are like, no, that's not mine. That's, that, that's called hard work, amen, that's not happiness. I'm grateful that, that Pastor Jackie doesn't make me eat gluten-free. <laughs> okay. But watch this though, joy can be found in the midst of everything, both good and bad. Despite what we experience, we have a posture and a confidence when you have received as a king's kid, as a son, as a daughter of the living God, the joy that comes from God to you and through you, we have the ability to live out our lives recognizing, man, God, you pl you've prepared a place for me. In the presence of chaos, in the presence of the hills and the valleys, you've, you've prepared a place for me to overcome, and I can still have joy. No rainy day, no difficult diagnosis, no stressful seasons should rob you of your, of your joy. It can mess with your happiness for sure. But again, joy isn't based upon happiness. Joy is based upon Jesus. Look at the person next to you and say, can't mess with my joy. And look at your second choice and say, I'm getting my joy back. Come on, I'm getting my joy back. The title of today's message, if you're taking down notes on the screen, is Hope Starts With Him. Amen. Hope Starts With Him. Let's pray. God, I pray that you give me clarity of speech today. It's not with perfect oratory delivery. God, I pray that you would anoint your word today. Let it make a marking impact in every one of our lives. We need a deposit today. As we step into seasons of where percentages of depression and anxiety and things go way up. God, we need more than ever your still small voice. We need you to wake us up in the night and get our attention. But God, today, I thank you that we redirect all of our stuff and frustrations and all the issues we deal with. We redirect it to you and recognize that hope starts with you in Jesus' name. Come on, if you receive his name, amen. How many of y'all have ever taken a long road trip? Like you calculated it and you're like, Whew, okay, this is gonna be a journey. And then you try to like break it up. Like we're gonna go to the, uh, the, the world's largest hand dug well. And kids are like, what's a well? And so these long road trips and we did one when we lived in the Midwest, we decided to go to what they deemed as the happiest, most joyful place on the earth. They said, we 
We provide happiness and joy. All you have to do is just show up and spend a lot of money. I joked last week that Disney will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to spend. I, that was, but our journey, y'all, was long. We were like, let's get to, let's get to Disney. It's going to be a lot of fun. And on our way, uh, that we were driving by this semi, and he was a little too close to us, and I saw underneath his truck like this thing flapping. One of his tires had blown, and the tire flipped out in front of us, and I hit that thing like a dead rhinoceros, and it ripped the entire front end of Jackie's Yukon off. It was unbelievable. Y'all, that will mess with your happiness. And my kids are like, are we still going to go to Disney? I'm like, you guys be quiet, okay? You're antagonizing me. Like, probably. I need duct tape. I got to figure out how to keep this bumper on and the guy just kind of drove off and it was awful it messed with our happiness and then we get to disney and jack jack's like babe you gotta just you gotta breathe okay we're gonna be good you guys gotta breathe and we get there and i'm at breakfast a couple mornings in and uh my my littlest uh one was starting to feel a little little rough and, and uh, i'm at breakfast and i hear this mom say yeah i don't know if you've heard about the disney toddler virus that's going around and i'm like She's like, but the good news is adults can't get it. Like, she was very confident in that answer. Nobody can get it other than these little kids under three. So Fox got it, and then Daphne got it, and then, and then Brecken got it real bad, and then Finley got it, and Mom and me were like, we're going to stay strong. And then Mom got it, and then I was like, I'm going to avoid all of y'all, okay? I'm going to duct tape y'all. Everyone's going to seal the door off. And then I got it, and in uh, 24 hours, I lost about 16 pounds. Okay, let's be honest. It was a brutal moment. That messed with my happiness. How many of you guys have had things go on in your life that you can say, yeah, it messed with my happiness? It did. But in moments of obstacles in life, when situations hit you, a lot of times by the enemy, it's a sucker punch. You don't see it coming. It's like, where did that... And the enemy doesn't play fair. He'll throw sand in your eyes, put your shirt up over your head, punch you in the stomach, somewhere like that's very specific. Like, <laughs> but the truth is, we go through things, but our joy should be unshakable because yeah. our joy is not created by circumstances or things that happen. Yeah. It's created and embedded from God. You know, in the middle of all of it, I remember we went to this little outdoor mall area, and they had these mannequins and. My daughter, Finley, thought it would be fun, and she climbed up in between the mannequins, and she was like, how many of y'all have ever done that? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You may, security might throw you out, but it's mall security, so they're not real cops. Anyways, <laughs> can I say that? Okay, anyways, she's like doing this, and people were walking by, like, like just wearing just the heaviness of life, just, just mopey and frustrated, and they would stop and look up, and she was doing this, and they would go, Person after person after person. And I stood off to the side and I watched. And I went over to her and I said, babe, what, what, what do you feel like you're, you're doing in this moment? Like, how are you, are you impacting people? I'm trying to break it down like as a pastor. Like, tell me what you're doing. And she said, I just noticed that so many people don't have smiles. I want to give them a smile. Dolly Parton, the legend. Which, by the way, don't go Google her halftime show for the Dallas Cowboys. But... <laughs> But in all seriousness, at 77 years old, I think this, that's a goal, right? Okay, it's a, it's a goal. Okay, she said this line, and this is something that I felt like Finley was doing that day. She said, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. Because the truth is, when we walk with the joy of the Lord, when we walk with the strength of God, and you know who you are and whose you are, you can walk through anything with, I, this is going to be super cheesy, don't re-quote it, but you can walk with confidence. <laughs> you can walk into a room with a different level of confidence that my joy is not disturbed by the economy. My joy is not disturbed by who's in the White House. My joy is not disturbed by the economic struggles. My joy is not disturbed by gas prices or the ebb and flow of life. Come on, somebody. My joy is not disturbed because my joy comes from the Lord. Again, elbow the person next to you and say, I, I feel like this message is for you. Okay. So joy isn't based on happiness. Joy is, again, based on Jesus. And when you align your life to God's calling, 
you'll recognize the joy that you have access to. I know that I'm called to be a dad. I love that I'm called to be a dad. So that meant my joy wasn't, my joy wasn't messed with when I got <laughs> this Disney toddler bug that nobody over the age of four was supposed to get. My happiness was messed with for a moment, but we kept our joy in the midst of hitting that tire on 10 at 80 mile an hour in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana. So I think today it's appropriate as we kick off week number one of Journey to Joys to talk about journeys, because that is truly what life is all about. Life is about the journey of you in relationship to the journey of Jesus. And there's a narrative that has been played out for thousands of years and continues to right now. In the Bible, every Christmas season, we hear about these three dear brothers that we call the wise men. Maybe you've seen them in the nativity scene. They came with gifts. And if you're churched at all and you have any uh, knowledge of the Bible, you know they came with gifts. And there was three things they came with. They came with gold, frankincense, as my seven-year-old likes to call it, Francie Cane, <laughs> and myrrh. And so I actually want to look in the word today in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, at this story, and again, you probably know this story, but I wanna look at it from a different angle and maybe bring a magnifying glass over it to help us on our journey to joy. It says this on the screens, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Verse three, when King Herod, who is absolutely out of his mind, by the way, Heard, that, heard this, he was disturbed, all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. He was fishing. Like, oh, I wanna know who this king of kings is. I wanna know who you guys are talking about. Verse five, in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I may go to and worship him. He did not have uh, healthy motives here. After they heard about this, after they heard the king, they went on their way and the star that had been seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place. Y'all, that was the first inkling of GPS right there. That was like the first ping. Like, send me a ping so I can find that barbecue place. God is amazing that he puts this star in place and stops it right over where Jesus was being bored. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense in her, and having been warned in a dream, this is amazing too, the Spirit of God, now the Magi, it wasn't like they were spirit-led prophets, like they studied the stars and astrology and they believed more in science and they were following this nudge. It's amazing how God can even get the hardest heart's attention. Yeah. I remember, that's my story, that God got my dad who was so calloused and so broken and so distracted and disconnected and so anti-God, religion, anti-Bible, all of its fallacies, the Holy Spirit, man, I'm thankful. It's the goodness and love of God, Romans 2, 4, that draws a man's heart to a place of freedom. Let me just say this prophetically for a moment. Maybe there's somebody in your family that y'all have deemed hopeless. I want you to keep praying for them. I want you to keep calling them by name. I want you to wake up in the morning and say, I thank you that my uncle, I thank you that my sister, I thank you that my brother, I thank you that my husband or my wife, I want you to still stand on the word of God and trust that God will be faithful to complete the work he started. Somebody should shout right there. I'm believing it. But verse 12, this is amazing. The spirit of God warned them in a dream to not go back to Herod, but to return to their country by another route. God was protecting them. The Magi were on a journey, and some scholars surmised that they traveled, this is wild, anywhere between 400 to 700 miles following the star in their quest to meet Jesus. I got people all the time that complain about a 25-minute drive to come here. I'll let that sit for a minute. Like, do, you have a, do you have a campus in my neighborhood? I'm like, not yet. That's called a, that's called a house party. We can make it happen. Amen. But I love this story because when you really dive into the journey of the Magi, what you'll find is incredible. The Magi were wise men. 
Again, meaning that they were well-learned authorities. I said it a moment ago in sciences and the beliefs of the age. What's really interesting, though, is that many scholars believe that approximately 500 years earlier, if you're Bible geeks, you're going to love this part. 500 years earlier, through the faithfulness of Daniel and representing his God in his time of exile in Babylon, where Daniel said, listen, throw me in the lion's den. I will not worship your God. Throw me in the lion's den. I will make them a pillow. Come on, they'll become a my pillow. <laughs> like, they'll, be, they'll become like a down comforter for me. And because of Daniel's stance to stand with and believe and worship the one true God, it's amazing, it's crazy that how a simple life of faithfulness can shape a nation and people even 500 years later. It all comes full circle now with the Magi as they're introduced to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by Daniel finding themselves meeting Jesus, who's a baby, fully God and fully man. But the significance doesn't stop there. The Magi, a foreign people, were now being called unto Jesus, a sign that the door was being opened and that Gentiles, non-Jews, were being invited into the presence of God, which we can all receive from that. And we remember throughout skits or veggie tales or little kids dressing up in costumes, maybe through Christmas productions, you probably remember the Magi again, bringing those three things. I always love it whenever we do little kid moments and we're gonna do some of the 22nd, 23rd with the nativity scene. It's always fun to like ask the kids like, and what did the wise men bring Jesus? And they're like, Bitcoin? You're like, okay, that's a little, <laughs> that might've been in the Gen Z Bible, but that's not the, <laughs> No, they brought three different gifts, which we just read about. Gold, one more time, frankincense and myrrh. Some would speculate that the gift of gold was brought to Christ as a symbol of his divinity. God in flesh, the gift of frankincense to Jesus was symbolic of his willingness to become a sacrifice as he grew up. And he would represent and hang on the cross for all of our sins and Myrrh was symbolic of bitterness and suffering and affliction. The baby Jesus would grow up to become a man who would suffer greatly and pay the ultimate price when he gave his life on the cross for all of us who would believe in him. Can you give God praise for that sacrifice and that? Since our entire foundation of faith is built on this principle. All right, if you're taking down notes, I want you to write this down because this applies to us. Number one, the journey to joy, this is great news, is for everyone. Woo, I'm grateful. That's really good news. The journey to joy is for everyone. Psalm 70, verse four says, but may all who search for you, this is David writing about God, but may all who search for you be filled with joy. Say, somebody say filled with joy. And gladness in you. John 15, 11 says, I've told you these things, that you will be filled with my joy. This is God speaking to us, that you would be filled with my joy, not happiness, not that quick trip on a cruise out of Galveston. Not that delicious cup of coffee and that steak that they made perfect. Those are little moments, those are happy moments, right? No, no, but you would be filled with joy, which unlocks strength, that unlocks peace, it unlocks perseverance, it unlocks confidence, it unlocks endurance, it unlocks a knowing that no matter what season I'm in, I will remain thankful and grateful for your promises and that they're yes and amen. Say filled with joy. And then it goes on and says, yes, your joy will overflow. We have a friend um, who, it's like, have you ever met that one person who it doesn't matter what kind of day they're having, it's like, I don't think they ever have a bad day. Like because they've chosen to look in the mirror and say no matter what I'm going through, I will not lose my Joy, we say it at our house all the time, our joy is non-negotiable, our peace is non-negotiable. You wake up, you look in the mirror, you put the whole armor of God on and say, I will not lose my joy. So you talk to somebody, you're like, how are you? This <laughs> has been an awful week. <laughs> I mean, it's the worst week of my life, but I've got joy. And I gotta be honest, sometimes you have to put it on. Because the enemy will try to put on heaviness and shame and yeah. condemnation and, oh, but don't you remember? Don't you remember your wild days when you were 22? Like, mm, that was a long time ago. And the enemy would try to put on these ill-fitting jackets and coats and try to weigh you down where you're not falling on your knees to worship the living God, 
but you're falling down in a place of shame. And I said this last week, Isaiah 61.3, he's like, hey, hey, do me a favor. Cast off all of that mess and replace that heaviness and replace it with a garment of praise. Because that spirit of heaviness has to leave when you put on the garment of praise. Even if, this is gonna be freeing for somebody, even if you can't sing on key. That might distract people around you. We're like, I witness your, and you're like, the faithfulness. <laughs> who cares? You know who loves it? He does. Yeah. He loves your worship. On key, off key, yeah. on time, off time. That last part was just for the white people. Off time. <laughs> you know who you are. They're saying, your feet's on, but your hands are off. You're like, I'm going to get it. Amen. I'm going to get it. <laughs> That's enough, but it's true. Amen. No, replace it. I feel like that's a word for somebody. As you are ending out 2023 strong, stop wearing that heaviness around like a badge of honor. Yeah. Oh, but brother, you don't know what I've been through. Start walking in your, your position instead of your condition. Start laying these things at the feet of God and say, I trust you more than the issues and the situations that are around me. Yes, your joy will overflow. Contagious was a weird word a few years ago. We didn't want to say the word contagious. Like, please, sir, don't cough near me or sneeze near me, right? But contagious joy is a good thing. Yeah. To overflow with joy is to impact generations. It's to impact my kids and my kids' kids. So look at the person next to you and say, you're about to overflow with joy. Come on. About to overflow with joy. I said this before, but the Magi were not a part of the Jewish lineage. They were not people that we understand to be raised in the culture and the depth of God's covenant, people known as the Israelites, but God desired their hearts. Y'all, he desires your heart. Some of you would maybe uh, write yourself off because of your struggles or your past decisions or issues that you've dealt with, but he loves you. He sees you. He knows you. I love this part right here. He chose you. Amen. And when you wake up in the morning, he's like, that's my girl. That's my boy right there. But sometimes we allow the, 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 the things that are trying to contend for all of our attention, days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months and even years go by. And the Lord says, hey, you want to include me? Because I can fix all of this and resolve, of this, resolve all of this if you'll just spend time in my presence. You may be here today with no Christian heritage or lineage. Maybe your story is you're the first generation believer. Maybe you're the first one to make a decision to follow after Christ. Maybe you're here today and with some messy moments in your story, you may be asking again and, and, and maybe you're watching online and you're like, but Pastor Daniel, you have no clue. You have no clue what I've been through, what I'm currently involved in now. God will never love me. The answer is he does love you. The answer is he still can fix, heal, restore, and deliver you. I said this a moment ago, but he's not just calling you, he's called you. He's not just in love with you, he's madly in love with you. He's chosen you, and you know what? He keeps on choosing you. I love that. Every day, I keep choosing Jackie. Every single day, she keeps choosing me. And we're gonna grow old together. I told her the other day, we, we, we're gonna get that picture for the next services, because this picture is a while ago, and she doesn't look any different. I'm like, how am I aging like an American president? And you're looking amazing. <laughs> what are you doing? And she's like, what, this? And I'm like, what do you mean? It's absurd behavior. But every day I choose her. She chooses me. Every day God chooses you. Even when you haven't chosen him. He loves you. Ah, and that should be freeing. The Bible says in John 15, verse 16, so you don't think it's my opinion, it says, you did not choose me. This is, this is spoken from the Spirit of God. But I chose you. Come on, say out loud, I'm chosen. chosen. And he appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit. Fruit that will, I love this, fruit that will last. That's generationally. That's a legacy type of fruit. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. So the journey to joy is for everyone. Number two, write this down. The journey to joy is a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith that is built on his word. And I'm gonna step on some toes here because I know we live in a culture now where we don't like hard lines. We don't like to put everything under, we, we, we do like to put everything under our own interpretation, guiding ourselves in our truth. But the Bible calls us to submit our opinions, our experiences, and our beliefs, however sacred they may be, not on our own opinion, but to his truth. 
That's what the Bible says, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the only way to God. And the real truth. Come on, say, say real truth. And the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Y'all, Jesus is the real truth. So we have to find our joy through faith, and our faith is built on the Word of God. It's based upon hearing and being in and staying in the Word of God above our own opinions, above our own emotions, above our own, well, this is just the way I, I, I feel about that situation. Is it based upon the moral compass that we believe in, the Word of God? Because if it's not, it's just an opinion. So with all that said, write this last one down, because this is huge. So it's for everyone. The journey to joy is about faith. The third one is the journey to joy is a journey to Jesus. Answer begins with, answer ends with Jesus. The Magi were on a journey upwards of 700 miles to encounter the real truth, to encounter the king, to go in and worship this both God and fully man. This is where when we start to really love Jesus, and you really start to condition your heart to be in relationship with Jesus, you know what ends up happening? You'll wanna start serving others like Jesus. Yeah. What ends up happening is you'll wanna start giving like Jesus. Jesus said it's better to give than it is to receive. Some of you are like, but I like stuff. That's not the point. <laughs> now you'll start seeing people, I've said this for, for, for months, you've never looked in the eyes. This was hard for me to say. There's some people. Ooh, there's some people, amen. Y'all got a list. You're like, oh, I got some people that we've never looked in the eyes of that Jesus doesn't love. That's sobering. But when you start to really get into that day-to-day -day personal relationship with Jesus and you spend time like a daughter with a dad or a father to a son, you start recognizing, wow, God, let me love people like you love them, even though that's challenging in my humanity. Let me forgive people like you have forgiven them, even though that's really challenging in my humanity. Let me serve others. Unlock in me a compassion and a passion for others. Let me give like Jesus, and as a result, I'm telling you, you will find joy like Jesus had. I believe with all my heart that through a personal relationship with Jesus, as you pursue him every day, not only will you find joy, but you'll find his strength. That's what the Bible says in First Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence when you feel like it. Everybody's like, wait a minute, is that the wrong version? No, no, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence when everything is going great. Seek his presence when you're in a crisis. Seek, seek his presence when you, 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 you need a breakthrough. Now, this word is huge. Seek his, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek is literally go after, pursue, chase after, run after. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek, the same word again, his presence. Say it out loud. Continually. Continually. That's every single day. This isn't a one and done moment. This is a daily sacrifice. This is a day. If I went nine months and never talked to Jackie, and we just ended up roommates, like two ships passing in the night, how healthy would our marriage be? Y'all would not buy that book. <laughs> it's called the nine months don't talk to each other book on leadership and marriage. Y'all be like, I'm not buying that book. No, no, our relationship is dependent upon every single day. Every single day. That's why we do the first 20 challenge. If you're not familiar with this and you haven't been paying attention this year or you're brand new, the first 20 challenge is every single day, take the first five minutes in the word every day. And here's what I want to recommend. If you haven't already done this or you, you haven't started this in your life, do a proverb of the day. There's 31 proverbs. You can do one every single day. So today, what is today, y'all? Today is the 10th. Read Proverbs 10 today. Read Proverbs 11 tomorrow. 12 and 13 and so on. And then add a psalm in there. Add a, uh, add a couple uh, of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start in Matthew and take the first five minutes then the next five minutes, do a little worshiping. Turn on your song, I witness your faithfulness, and just worship. Sing at the top of your lungs. Cast all your cares on the Lord, First Peter 5, 7, and worship and praise him. Be that person in the car, they're like, what is going on in there? Oh, I'm worshiping. 
Oh, I'm singing, I'm shouting, I'm giving God praise. I'm Philippians chapter four, verse four, rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Take the next five minutes, a word, worship, then take five minutes to pray. And watch this. If you, if every one of your prayers you've been praying lately came to pass, were answered, how many of them would involve somebody else? Because a lot of times we get caught up in them. God, don't you know my bills are late? God, God, don't you know I need a little bit of money here? God, don't you know I need? So here's what I'm gonna just challenge you with. Uh, pray for somebody, pray for others. You want real joy? Joy starts, J, you know I love acronyms. J starts with Jesus. O is others. Then Y is yourself. Start praying for others. Then say, God, and I thank you that you're providing and protecting. I thank you for Psalms 91 protection around my family. That no thief, robber, burglar, Murder, God, that our cars won't break down. We'll have no blowouts or flats, no mechanical issues. God, I thank you that today you're leading me across paths, God, where I can get in the way of people's storms. God, let me be a blessing today, God. If you ask me, I'll give it away as long as it's not too much, but I'll do it. You know what I mean, Lord? Like, I'm willing, God. Like, pray for others. So word, worship, prayer, and then the last five minutes we added this year. We just called it the first 15. Now we call it the first 20. I want you to stop like we did in worship earlier. Close your eyes and simply remember you witnessing his faithfulness. Whew. Saved me from that situation. You, you protected me there. You, you, you protected my reputation. You, you delivered here. You, you were in that waiting room there. You, you restored there. You, you showed up and you were with me in that panic attack. You were there in the midst of that low place. And just begin to reflect on all that he has done. And I'm telling you, it's a faith booster. And then you'll walk out of the house with joy. Elbow the person next to you and say, J-O-Y, it's for me. Come on. It's a little cheesy. I just want to make sure you're awake. Amen. Life is about journeys. And every single step Jesus took towards the cross was so that we could take a step towards the king. And even in the journey of the Magi, it started with the knowledge of God's presence but ended in meeting God face to face. Our journey with God must not be about just knowing about him. Like, oh, I know about that guy. No, it's about knowing him, really knowing him. That's where real joy is found. Romans 15, 13 says this, I pray that God, the source of all hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you again will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we believe because this church belongs to God, we're going to be a joy-filled, life-giving church that gets in the way of people's storms and shows them that there's a better way, and that better way is through Jesus. Come on, have y'all received anything today from this first week of Journey to Joy? So it belongs to everyone. The Journey to Joy is a walk of faith. But at the end of the day, the Journey to Joy starts with Jesus. Now, last week, uh, during Vision Sunday, which if you have not uh, checked it out. How many of y'all were in the room at Vision Sunday? Come on, it was a great weekend, beautiful. Uh, you can go back to our YouTube channel and check it out. And we talked about how we're a grateful church and everything we do is out of the overflow of recognizing that God is our source and relationships stain, sustain us and how our attitude creates opportunities and how trials can be our teacher and expectations woo, and experiences expand us, right? And that faith is our foundation unfailing love every day follows us. And I love the last one, the L, because I spelled out grateful. The L is laughter is our medicine. We're a church that's filled with joy. And so we are filled with joy and also trusting God, even in the midst of challenging seasons with what he's entrusted us with. So every year, and I've talked about this last week, but every year we do an end of year Hope for the House initiative, the Hope for the House offering. When you participate, because nobody's forcing you to, I do believe, and I said this last week, it would be amazing if we had 100% participation. A lady in the lobby asked me last week, she said, I just don't have that much right now. If I gave $5, is that enough? I said, we can all do everything, but we can all do something. Yeah. And she goes, but how is that going to make an impact? I said, we have over 5,000 that attend every weekend. If every single person gave something, what kind of impact? She's like, my goodness. We could do a lot. We could take a lot of territory. Because every week we turn gymnasiums from Katy and here at West Houston into sanctuaries. It takes resources to continue to do all of our missions initiatives, to reach 
the thousands of people and the 3,764 people that have given their lives to Jesus just this year because we opened the doors. So if you give and you're faithful in your tithe and your offerings, thank you. From the bottom of Pastor Jack and I's heart and our entire staff and our team, thank you for the way you give. But when you participate in the Hope for the House offering, it empowers our church. When I say our church, I mean all of us to give hope from the house. We had street reach and outreaches last week all around our city. We packed in our packathons over a million meals because of generosity. So at the end of every year, and maybe you've gotten and heard about this, but every nonprofit in churches, 30% of their budget comes in in the last two months of the year. So we're aware of it. We budget our entire year around end of year opportunities and moments. But here's our prayer. Everybody, and I said this last week, that everybody would pray. God, what would you have me do? Ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? And then respond. So in just a moment, I have the worship team come out. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take a moment. And we believe this is a miracle weekend. And we're gonna attach our faith to this Hope for the House opportunity. I said this last week, but from babies all the way up to our young adults, we believe our Hope for the House offering is also gonna help us reach a future for them, that it's gonna be hope for their future. And because of your generosity, it's gonna be hope for our city to continue to take more territory, to begin to open up other campuses. Some of y'all drive in from a, a ways away. We've got people that drive in from Pearland. We've got people that drive in from all over. We're constantly looking for more places to open up more campuses. So thank you. Now here at West Houston, you're like, I don't care about other campuses. This is my campus, amen. But we also have people all over the country that are watching in our other campuses. It's pretty amazing. There's a couple, Trey and Callie. They live in New Mexico. You've probably heard me talk about them. Anytime y'all want to start with me, amazing. Um, they're in New Mexico, and they're part of our watch party. And uh, they, they have a, 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 an amazing watch party every Sunday night. Can we give it up for them? They're literally going to watch tonight. So love you guys so much. He called me on Friday and said, hey, we want to be a part. They've been to Hope City one time. They sat right here on the front row. And he said a statement. He said, People must just be so excited to be in the room every week. And I said, some of them. <laughs> it just depends what I'm preaching. If I step on your toes, maybe not. But... No, he said, what, a, what an amazing move of God. He said, it's revival. So many people are being saved, set free, healed, and delivered. And he said, and the, the dynamic of diversity? Y'all look around the room. This is what heaven looks like multi-generational, multicultural. And he said, my wife and I have decided to do a donor match. We're gonna send up to $200,000. They've been to Hope City one time. And he said, we're gonna sow, because we feel like this Hope for the House end of year offering, we can put seed in the ground because we really feel like it's really, really good ground and y'all are doing so much. You know, 2%, they say, statistics are, only 2% of a lot of Americanized churches give people an opportunity. I don't know if that percentage is true or not, but I know here at Hope City, I close every service with the opportunity that you, I wanna give you an opportunity to know Jesus as your Savior. This is the only reason we do all of it. The songs are great, the word is amazing and encouraging, but if anybody leaves and hasn't been given the opportunity to say, Jesus, I need you as my Savior, then we have missed the mark. So he said, we wanna sow into it. And he said, so we're gonna give up to 200,000 as a donor match. So everybody who gives, if they give a dollar, it's like it's two. If they give $100, it's like it's 200. And he said, we wanna spark a little bit of faith in the room to let people in Houston, Texas know there are people in Carlsbad, New Mexico, praying for them, standing with them, and believing with them about what God is doing at Hope City. One more time, we love you guys. Thank you for that. So this is what I wanna do. We haven't done this in years. I want our team, our ushers, our team to get prepared. The Bible says in Hebrews 3, Verse four, this is one of my favorite verses. This has kind of been an anthem. Team, y'all can get ready. We're gonna pass buckets for the first time since pre-COVID. And I'm not saying this is gonna be a, a reoccurring thing. And this is not free. You don't take stuff from it. You put something in, amen. <laughs> no, but I wanted to do it. And I really felt from the Holy Spirit, it was like a symbolization of putting seed in the ground. The Bible says that he will provide seed to the sower and bread for you to eat. But the problem is when the economy is crazy, and we start panicking, we hoard what we have, and what happens is we end up eating our seed. We end up eating what we should be planting, but he not only provided seed for the sower, but he also provided a harvest to make bread to eat. He is your source. 
So here at Hope City, we never ask for a specific amount. We ask that you would pray, Lord, what would you have me to do on this miracle offering weekend as we participate in the Hope for the House offering? God, I pray today that you would bless it. Close your eyes for just a moment. Hebrews chapter three, verse four says, the house is built by someone. That's all of us. The house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. God, I thank you that this is your church. This is your house. These are your beautiful people. And God, as we lean in with big faith this weekend, I cast vision last week and asked folks to pray, to come prepared, and then to respond. So God, I pray today that as we sow towards our end of year uh, offering to close out all the initiatives and all the things you've entrusted us with this year, and it also with audacious faith sets us up for 2024. God, I pray for an abundant harvest of righteousness to come back and touch every heart, every family. Do a miracle in their life, God. Move in their finances. Let everything they put their hands to prosper. In Jesus' name. The ways to give, if you look on the screen, amen. The ways to give are on the screen. If you want an envelope, you can lift your hand. Our team will help you. If you say today, I want a record for my giving. If you uh, want to give by the end of the year for tax purposes, you do have till the 31st. But today was about faith. Today was about all of us together saying, let's bring our best before the Lord. You can lift up your hand. Our team will help you. And the ways to give are on the screen. Scan the QR code if you're like techie and you're like, I don't want to write anything down with a pen. And then in just a moment, the worship team is just going to play for a couple moments. We're going to pass the buckets. If you feel led to sow, I want you to do that today. If you've given online, thank you. And then in just a moment, we're going to stand to our feet after the buckets have passed. We're going to worship for just a few moments. Now look at me real quick. God loves a cheerful giver. We're not manipulative pastors that are like, I'm telling you right now, this section's the $250 section. You'll never get that from us. This is not an infomercial moment. This is not a twist your arm moment. This is the same Holy Spirit that all of us have access to. All we ask is that you would ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? Pastor Jackie and I are participating. We're not just saying it, we're actually sacrificially giving to it. Because we believe in this house. We believe in all the thousands of people that have been impacted. Everything God is about to release and do. 24, 25, 26, 27. The first quarter of next year, we're going to be breaking ground on our brand new West Houston campus, y'all. And through your generosity, if you participate, you help set the pace for all of that. All the initiatives, taking more ground, launching new campuses doing bigger outreaches, adopting schools and taking care of kids with backpacks and shoes and full clothes, helping the single moms and the widows, and thank you. All of our prison initiatives and outreaches, we've got mission trips, local, nationally, and global. Thank you for your generosity. One more time, if you need an envelope, you can lift up your hand. Beautiful. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. I want you to talk to the Lord. I want you to pray should ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? If you're with your spouse, ask them. Pray for a moment. If you're single, just talk to the Lord. And let's all hook our faith up today. As we worship you. So fire and wind, come and do it again. Oh, open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. out with this.
one more time, say. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all so God, we I want. pray that you bless every single seed and all the offering that's being placed into your hands today. And God, I pray that you would bless it supernaturally, God. Then at the end of this year, God, they look back and say, look at what the Lord has done. Because God, this is the truth. For some, this is extremely sacrificial. For some, it's not that big of a deal. But God, I thank you that even at the widow's might, all the way up to something more significant and sacrificial, it's all significant to you. And it makes an impact that's greater if all of us do it together. Usher's team, I'm gonna ask you to pass the buckets to Katie at Woodlands here at West Houston. We're gonna go ahead and pass the buckets and then after the buckets have gone by, I want you to stand your feet, and then we're going to bring it in for a close. Go ahead, pass it. Just, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Thanks for letting everybody know. Thank you all. So as the buckets go by, you can stand your feet, and we're going to worship for just a moment. And I want to give everybody an opportunity for the gospel to give their lives to Jesus. So after the buckets have passed you, you can stand. If the buckets haven't gone by yet, don't feel any pressure to stand just yet. And would you lift your hands towards heaven? Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon us. Team, we gotta come back up to the front and grab the buckets on the ends. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. You can put your hands down for just a moment. If you're here and you would say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. The truth is, across all of our campuses, there are people that came in today and they don't know Jesus. And the reason we do all of this is to give you an opportunity. The Bible says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, in just a moment, when I count to three, I want you to slip up your hand and say, you're talking about me. The second invitation is this. I want to rededicate my life. I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I wanna rededicate my life today. I got caught up in the prodigal life and I've been living messy, but today is my day. I wanna rededicate my life. I want everybody to close their eyes just for a moment. One, I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. Two, I wanna rededicate. Three, if that's you, slip up your hand. I'm looking all over the room. I see you, my friend. I see you right here and here. The journey to joy starts with Jesus. I see you, my friend. I see you right there, beautiful. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise? Thank you, my friend, thank you, amazing. All right, well, everybody pray this prayer out loud. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me, and it hasn't worked. From today on, I choose to live for you. With all my heart, I repent. I confess my struggles, all my sins, all my issues, and I ask for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I confess you, now and forever, that you are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.